Now I believe I should be coming through in just a sec. But let's just make sure. Yes, there I am. Here I am. Good to be back. And uh, welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. Welcome to another character creation session. You're all so lucky to be here with me uh, on this lovely Sunday evening. I've got a rare evening off. Uh, a lot of the time I'm running games on my for members of my Patreon. And uh, there's been a bit of a reschedule. Our Wraith the Oblivion game is being moved to another weekend. So that means I've got a free weekend, fr well, a free Sunday night. And I thought, well, I've got an hour uh, or so before I should probably get to bed. And therefore, what better, what use of my time than making a video? But I'll be also be honest, I do have an ulterior motive. I have an agenda, you see. My agenda is that there is a sale on right now on at Drive Through RPG on all V20 products, I think minus Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition, the core book. And the reason is Onyx Path Publishing, right now they've got a sale. It's their 10th anniversary this year, and they are reducing all of their games down to 10%. Of their regular cost and this is um, a pretty big thing they're not doing it all at the same time last month it was dystopia rising evolution this month it's world of darkness month february is world of darkness month and this week i think ending tomorrow in fact it's v20 so next week it will be another game and I thought before the week runs out, I will do something vampire focused uh, and draw your attention to the fact that this sale is going on. Because if there are any V20 books you don't own at this point, and I'll just read, and, oh, I just adjusted my microphone. If there's any vampire books you don't own, uh, then you can get them at 90% off the current price. 90, 9, 0. That's quite a lot of money to get knocked off the price of a book. So if you haven't bought V20 Dark Ages, which is the focus of our uh, video today, uh, or Beckett's Jihad Diary, or Law of the Bloodlines, Law of the Clans, the Guide to the Tal Mahera, the True Black Hand, any of these books, they all have 90% off their current price, and that is a steal, really is. There's some fantastic books there, and I may have contributed to several of them. Uh, I have posted a link in the description below to where you can get V20 Dark Ages for 90% off. They, uh, other books you will be able to find, just search for Vampire the Masquerade, 20th Anniversary Edition or V20 on DriveThruRPG, you'll be able to find a whole bunch, all with 90% off the price. Again, it is very much worth doing. Now, this character creation session has another motive still, because as I mentioned at the very start of this video, I run games for members of my Patreon. I run games right now of Werewolf the Wild West, Wraith the Oblivion, The One Ring, 2nd Edition, uh, we also have going this V20 Dark Ages game and Cthulhu by Gaslight. So I've actually got five games going, f five games going right now uh, on my Patreon that I run via Discord for the people at back. It's lovely stuff. And you may have noticed I mentioned V20 Dark Ages. So I thought, well, I can get some value for money here because not only can I create a video, create a video and a character associated with V20 Dark Ages, which currently has 90% off on Drive-Thru RPG, uh, along with a bunch of other V20 books, I can also create a character that I can throw at the coterie that are currently being played in my V20 Dark Ages game. So let's create, not a protagonist, because that's what we usually do in these sorts of videos. We usually create a character that we want to play, this time, we're going to create a storyteller character. We're still going to use the standard character creation method, but we're going to create an interesting villain who may stand in the way of our player coterie, who are currently in the British Isles. If you are a long-term fan or follower, subscriber of this channel, you'll know that many moons ago I ran a Dark Ages vampire game that was primarily based around a domain of thorns, uh, where ultimately the convention of the same name is held. And uh, this game wa it was based around the same kind of thing, although it's gone off in its own direction. Uh, 
and it's been lovely to revisit it. But now we need a fresh antagonist, and that is what you are going to help me with, viewers. I want your input on who this villain should be, what their motive should be, why they're not going to like our player coterie. So before I get started, let's have a look at some of the, qu the questions. I just knew that by putting vampire in the title, people would start tuning in. You are creatures of habit, just as I am. Let's see, what have we got here? Joe says this is awesome. I agree, Joe. Define timeline says, hey there, Mr. Dawkins, huge fan of your channel and contributions to the vampire world. Super excited to see your approach to this. Thank you very much. James Tobias Stewart says, just FYI, gentlemen, your videos are a common go-to I use when trying to get newbies into Vampire the Masquerade. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, one thing I would say, uh, if anyone is at all interested, is that if you want to support my work, yes, definitely watch my videos. I'm not going to ask you to click on ads. I mean, the amount of money I get through YouTube is very trivial. But if you want to support my work, go on matthewdawkins.com. I think I've linked it below because you can find links to all of the books I've worked on via that website. And it's quite a resume, uh, if I do say so myself. I've had a busy few years. So... If you buy any books by clicking on any of those links, I will get a cut of whatever you buy. And if you aren't interested in buying anything right now, and I would love it if you did, I'd love it if you bought something while we're streaming, um, then there's also the option to buy me a cup of tea, uh, which basically links straight to my PayPal. Send me money. Alternatively, you can get linked to my Patreon, sign up for a game, that sort of thing. So there's lots of options. Go on MatthewDawkins.com and have a browse around. So we also have Falani saying, good evening, folks. Uh, Define Timeline says, the clan videos are just dynamite. Thank you. V20 was very good. Currently in a Changing the Dreaming V20 game. I would have Changeling 20 on my shelf right here. And Ed R, I love Dark Ages. I love Dark Ages too, Ed. I probably run more Dark Ages than I do Masquerade. I think I do actually prefer it as an era, as a setting. But with all that said, all the preamble done, let's get to it. We're nearly at the 10 minute mark and we haven't even started creating our character. So, viewers, the choice is yours. What we usually start with when creating characters for Vampire is the clan. You know, almost every single person says, well, I want to play a Ventru, or I want to play a Gangrel, or a Nosferatu, or whatever. But it's often a mistake, in my opinion, to start with that central concept, because it can define a character in the wrong way. It's often more interesting to layer up by thinking of this character as a mortal, and then they get embraced, and how does that change their life? How does that change their outlook? So let's have a think. See, and people are already shouting vampire clan names <laughs> in the chat. Uh, Bruja! Uh, <laughs> that, that's what they do often, you know. If you go to an Elysium and you say, hey, how are you doing? They'll just go, Bruja, in your face, and you'll know which clan they belong to. They're not a clan of subtlety, the blue Bruja. No, we don't want to think about clan just yet. We want to think about the Dark Ages setting. It's the Dark Ages, the British Isles. It's the middle of the 13th century. So it's Middle Ages. It would be more accurate. And so we have a lot of roles in society that can be filled. It isn't just simply a case of peasants, merchants, priests, and aristocrats. Though those are pretty good brackets to put people into. You've also got all kinds of artisans. You have roving soldiers and knights, uh, crusaders. You have, we have historians, even then. Uh, you have so many different interesting characters. Occultists, bear in mind as well, this is a world of dark fantasy and horror, so you can have people who are actually interested in the supernatural. You could have witch finders, witch hunters, inquisitors. Hell, hedge sorcerers, hedge magicians. There's a lot of options that exist at this time and can exist in our Dark Ages game. So let's have a look. First of all, we're thinking of our concepts rather than our clan, so this is the, what we're thinking of. So our concept, what kind of character do we want this villain to be? What is their background? And let's use the Monty Cook method, an adjective noun who verbs. 
So that would be something like an angry priest who steals, or a a, a jealous wife who murders, or something like that. Let's think of that. So I'm going to look in the chat right now and see what we've got up coming up. Uh, Mask and Ear Projects as a university professor that's an occult historian. Uh, we have what region of the world, Western or Eastern Europe? We're currently in the British Isles. Uh, so... Mm, Paul Smart says, true Bruja or Salubri. We're not on clan yet. A rat catcher. Rat catcher, Mikhail. That is a very interesting idea. Um, people don't often think of the animal side of life, but of course a lot of peasants were involved in being herdsmen and so on. A rat catcher is a valuable tool. An occult assault. Dragon Cat says, for a concept, how about a lord's son returning from the crusades, his faith shaken by the atrocities committed in the Holy Land? That's a good one. A valuable profession. Translator. Uh, another person in favour of the rat catcher. A baker. Um, so, again, we've got lots of different clans being thrown out. We're not on clans yet. Try and think beyond clans. Right now we're just thinking about what this person was before their embrace. They're not being defined by their clan. The clan may add a layer to the character, but it is not going to define them. Uh, so we've got the suggestion of a Quaker. Did Quakers exist in the 13th century? That I do not know. I can't say I'm an expert on the Quaker faith. Uh, we've got a lowly peasant who spies a canny scribe that forges. This is what I like. We're using that Monty Cook method now uh, from Numenera and the other cipher system games. A candlestick maker. Now that's just taking the piss. A decisive killer that is hungry. Hmm. Witch hunter. Vendetta against specific type of people. Weary translator who seeks to own his own land. A proud gambler who cheats. A zealous cult leader who is a serial killer. A prideful miller who schemes. Rat catcher is also a very novel idea. We've actually had three people now who have said rat catcher. So our noun is rat catcher. Our character's profession is a rat catcher. So what adjective, what verb shall we put with it? I actually quite like... Uh, let's see, where was it? Um... We've got Unholy Erebus suggested something here. A proud gambler who cheats. I'm going to make it uh, slightly different. I'm going to go for a proud rat catcher who gambles. It's an odd concept, but I like it. So, a proud rat catcher who gambles. Okay, there we go. I'm using this character sheet from Mr. Gon's website. So it's always the best place to download character sheets from if you can't find them on Drive Through RPG. So right now we have a proud rat catcher who gambles. Now, we need to know this is what this person was in life. They obviously lived in an urban environment if they were catching rats. I wonder what they were proud of, why they were so proud of their profession. Uh, maybe they were proud of being a very successful gambler, but if they were a successful gambler, why would they still catch rats for a living? Hmm. We've got to find Time Line 10 gambles all his rat catching coin away. That's that's good. Good. I like that. So yes, uh, someone has clarified that the Quakers were not founded until the 1600s, so no, I thought not. They probably would have been purged as a heresy in the 13th century. That kind of thing was going around a lot. So let's now look, before we get to clan, we're not on the clan yet, nature and demeanour. So nature and demeanour is a part of the character sheet for vampire that is often missed it's something that characters folk players i should say look at quite closely at character creation and then forget all about in play storytellers too uh, in fact i'd say it's more the responsibility of the storyteller to remember because the storyteller should be rewarding or awarding players with willpower when they are playing these nature and demeanour but often they don't note it down they don't call back to it it's a good uh, sort of launching platform for a character to know what your nature and demeanour are, but often characters veer widely off that once the character has taken shape. So let's not do that. Let's think of a nature and demeanour that actually fit this character, that this villain can be defined by. So... Let's see. I'm loving the ideas, by the way, that are appearing in the chat while I'm talking on. Uh, Edar says, A wife and children need the money, which left him penniless. Catches rats to process their meat and feed it to people as a way of getting revenge on society. Wow, okay. Uh, they are proud of being a successful gambler, but spend all of their money to buy drinks for those around them. A gregarious rat catcher, then. A convivial, I think you would call it. 
Richard says they could have had a noble parent and been proud of that heritage and always wanted more from life, respect, power, etc. They think it's their birthright. Birthright. So, Maskinir says, judge as a nature, demeanor, gallivant. Prideful because he breeds the rats and guarantees his income. So, I'm seeing a lot of people here. Uh, oh, and um, Carapesa, I'm assuming, uh, saying, demon the fallen will be returned. Not, in, not up to me. That will be up to Paradox Interactive. People are focusing a lot on the pride aspect, and I think that's good. This is why we put that kind of thing into a concept. So let's find a nature that... A bravo, probably. A bravo would actually make sense. Uh, it's someone who is proud. But then again, pride is probably... I think the pride and the gamble are probably going to help influence the nature and demeanor, you know. Uh, the nature is probably going to be something to do with his pride. That's his sin, in a way. His demeanor is he's a gambler. He's always out and about gambling money. So, let's think. A gallant is a appropriate nature for someone who is proud. Uh, we also have, let's see, yeah, competitive... Competitor. Yeah, competitor makes sense. What in the hell is the word for horse merchant, says Soren. Uh, yeah, a horse merchant, horse seller. Uh, I don't think there is any different word. Um, answers on a postcard. We're going to go for competitor for nature and demeanor. Well, do we have gambler here? We do not. But I think we can... Well, we could probably go for rogue. And it would uh, fulfill the same need, but I'm just not going to select from the drop down. I'm just going to type it in. Ha ha ha. There we go. All right. Uh, so a lot of people are saying things like, what if they, this person's a chameleon? What if they're a sociopath? This is the kind of thing that this character could become. This is what they are at their heart. So let's keep that in mind. He's not Skaven fodder. This isn't Warhammer 40k. And. I'm going to ignore or avoid the temptation to make someone who is a rat catcher in life a Nosferatu in undeath. I know we're all going to be tempted to go there. That's how we're picturing this individual. But I think we need to break free from that stereotype and now think, okay, they became a vampire. What clan did they join? But let's talk a little through how this character became a vampire. We can tie it quite neatly to this concept. And again, building a concept in that Monty Cook way, the adjective noun who verbs is such a fantastic way of telling a short story about a character. In this case, we know that he, and it seems we've settled on this character being a man, uh, has got a sense of pride. Maybe it's misplaced. Uh, probably a decent rat catcher, but they gamble, and they may gamble to a dangerous degree. They lose a lot of money. And, well, when you end up in debt to someone, bad things can happen. So I'm going to just go off a little on some imaginarying... <laughs> Let's say that this character was indeed getting a little under, or out of his depth with gambling debts. And so he decided he would do something very much out of his usual bailiwick. He would have to steal. He wasn't going to be able to pay his baron or his lord uh, the taxes that he was due. And so... He was going to have to acquire that coin some other way, a dangerous way, a murderous way. Maybe this is an individual who dabbles in poisons, and so he isn't just catching rats with traps, but catching rats with poisons, and so try to poison a wealthy landowner, a reclusive one, shall we say, a reclusive knight who had returned from the Crusades and not been seen since, because he knew that if he poisoned this knight, he could rob the place blind. Maybe he'd been employed by this knight once to catch rats on his property. And so he knew his way around it. And so he lay, he poisoned this man's food. He poisoned his water supply. He retreated and waited to return. But when he returned that night, expecting to find this hemlock frozen corpse, he did in fact find a man or woman, a vampire, that 
didn't need to eat, didn't need to drink, was unaffected by the poison. However, this night's mortal servants had been. There's Vampire awake, wondering who the poisoner was, and now seeing the rat catcher suddenly arrive at night time, found their suspect. Was very unhappy, <laughs> and said, well, I'm going to have to start restaffing. I'm going to start needing new servants, new retainers, and as you just killed all of mine, I'm going to make you my next one. And rather than making this rat catcher into a ghoul, the vampire punished this mortal the only way they could think to do, which was with the embrace. So, uh, thank you very much. All the applause I'm getting right now for this fantastic story when you've run as much vampire and written as much vampire as I have, you start kind of dreaming about vampire and can never get away from it. So this is our character, and now we need to think, what was the clan of his sire? That's the question you need to be thinking when you're creating characters for Vampire the Masquerade. And yes, this sounds a bit gatekeepy. It isn't. You can act genuinely create characters however you like. But for me, what I like, what I like doing is thinking who was my character in life and what was the clan of the vampire that embraced this character? Not what clan is my character. And that tells more of a story, informs my role play a little more, in, and if it if I'm storytelling, it informs the NPCs I'm putting in play. So, we have got a, a lot of comments here. Let's see, we've got plenty of suggestions. We have got people suggesting Zimishi, Ravnos, Cabadokians, Gangrel, Ravnos. Um, thank you very much, by the way, everyone who is dropping by and commenting. This is a wonderful turnout. And as I've got so many people here uh, right now, I'm going to take a quick break to say the reason we're doing Vampire right now isn't just because I love Vampire, although I do. It isn't just because I'm running V20 Dark Ages for my group on Patreon, one of my groups on Patreon, although I am. It's because right now, if you haven't heard, all V20 books, minus one, have 90% off their cost on DriveThruRPG. 90%. They're down to 10% of their cost, and that sale ends tomorrow. So, if you need to pause me, or if you need to go on drivethroughrpg.com while I'm talking to buy yourself books at a ridiculously low price, please do so. I'm speaking to you now because I believe I have your attention because there's about 40-something of you watching right now. So do, do take advantage of that sale because I think tomorrow it will change to a different sale. It's Onyx Path Publishing's 10th anniversary. Every single month we're putting different game on sale at 10% of its cost. This week it is V20 and it's Myriad of Books and next week it'll be a different game because February is World of Darkness month. So I'm telling you that now. Don't miss it while that sale is on. So we've got a lot of suggestions here. We've got someone suggesting a true Kiyashid. I'm not a big fan of the Dark Ages Kiyashid, I will be honest. I prefer the modern Kiyashid, but I have, in fact, uh, x 28 I believe I've had this very conversation with you <laughs> before about why I like the Kiyashid. Uh, Kiyashid, uh, Sean Connery or not. A Territorial Tremere. I quite like that idea, actually. Love me some La Sombra. Now, uh, we've got Ventru suggestions. Uh, La Sombra, again. I've seen a few people say that this sire sounds like they could be a La Sombra. Uh, we have... <laughs> Dragon Cat says, perhaps the sire knew all along that someone had poisoned their servants in the way only a Malkavian could. That's very good. Uh, we also have... Let's see. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, that Bruja shouting at us again. Ventru Ratcatcher, never even once, says Soren. Well, we're not saying that as a vampire that this that he goes on catching rats. Maybe he goes on catching rats because he goes on catching spies. Ah, there we go. When he was a mortal, he caught rats on all fours, rodents. As a vampire, he catches bipedal rats. People who are poking around his sire's domain. Asking too many questions, turncoats to the lord of the manor. And now as I talk about that, it sounds more and more like a Zimishi. 
because you've got the animalism that ties into the actual rat catching, you've got the ore specs that ties into the interrogation, and yeah, vicissitude. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't really apply, but that's fine because we don't have to focus on all three disciplines at this time. Uh, a lot of people are saying Malkavian because the ore spec side is, of course, very strong there. I can see that as well, but I'm thinking I am thinking Zimishi is a notice as well. I'm pronouncing Zimishi in a different way to how I do in pretty much every other video because every video I pronounce it differently, as you should. And so, yeah, we've got... So old Clan Zimishi is an option. Hmm, that's true, that's true. Let's go for... Uh, lots of people are suggesting Malkavian, so it is very tempting, but I am going to go... Lots of people are also saying Old Clan Zimishi, but this... I'm, I'm going for... I'm going for straight... Good old fashioned Zimishi. I don't think I've created one since. Since when? Since I wrote one for the V20 ready made characters book, which I may have on my shelf somewhere. Uh, also 90% off right now, although it was remarkably low cost back then as well. And you know what? I think the character in this book that I created didn't have. Um, wasn't exactly vicissitude focused. I don't have many of the books I wrote on anymore. I tend to sell them. There we go. We got D Z Schillinger. Uh, he was our he was our Zimishi. He was working as a vet, so very much animalism focused. One of his quotes: "Would you like to see friend? Would you like to see friendly puppy?" <laughs> yes. Don't follow D Z Schillinger anywhere. Uh, I'm very fond of that book. I wrote it by myself. I mean, it's a very short book. It was the first project I had as a writer that I could write from beginning to end um, and not share the content with anyone other than the developer anywhere. And yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. So I'm going to go for Zimishi. Uh, lots of people are saying Old Clan Zim, Zim were, do deserve more love. Hmm... Hmm, they do, don't they? Yeah. I mean, there's no reason I couldn't do an old Clan Zimishi in the Dark Ages, is there? Alright, let's go for old Clan Zimishi. Why not? I will cave in to public opinion. So, no vicissitude for this Zimishi, I'm afraid. No alien space virus infecting this uh, fucker. Right. Um, someone asking there, Kinley, does the discount include hardcover, softcover books, or is it just PDFs? It is just PDFs, because if we reduce the cost of our hardcovers and softcovers to 10%, we would go out of business rapidly. Uh, did you know, Agent 29416, the question, would you like to see Puppy? Um, it gives me chitty chitty bang bang child catcher feels. That's a very good question. Uh, or not a very good question, it's a very good statement. Here's a random fact for you that no one asked for. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, as a lot of people are aware, was written by Ian Fleming. Uh, Ian Fleming, however, um, did not write Chitty Chitty Bang Bang's Child Catcher. The Child Catcher wasn't in Ian Fleming's work. Roald Dahl provided rewrites and additions to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Roald Dahl, that awful anti-Semite and known uh, child author. And Roald Dahl added the child catcher. That's my understanding, and when you realise that, when you think of that, you can actually kind of see the child catcher as a Roald Dahl character. It very easily fits into his or milieu of, of characters. Yes, the Ian Fleming wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, of James Bond fame. So we will stick to 12th generation for the time being. Uh, it is too late to make the character a Grumble Duke. Maybe next time, Richard. <laughs> Uh, we uh, fortunately, I don't think the Grumble Duke disciplines are on the drop down here. I'll have a look. No, I can see just looking at letter A that their disciplines are not present. And what shall we call the uh, this old clan Jimmy sees sire? Uh, what is the sire's name? 
Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it anything else? Uh, this is a vampire who has lived in uh, the in somewhere isolated in the British Isles for some time. We said night, but it doesn't have to be. It's just someone who has returned to their domain after a long time away. Paul Smart says Sir Richard. Uh, yeah, Sir Richard's a good name. Oh, uh, Fennec Rakoshi. I th that wouldn't that name doesn't really work for Dark Ages Britain. How did they end up in Britain? How they probably took a ship like anyone else. <laughs> um, I mean that's how your Danes got here, Soren. So um, <laughs> I would assume that's how the Zimishi got here too. Um, hello to Hungary. Uh, so, yes, the child, our character, doesn't have a name yet. But let's go for a sire name. Duke Callahan. Callahan, that sounds very Irish, doesn't it? I think that is an Irish name. Maybe this is taking place in the Emerald Isle. Hmm. Oh, I like that Maskinier project. Sir Lakewood. Sir Lakewood. That sounds good, doesn't it? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Sir Lakewood. Is a bit George R. R. Martin, but I like it. I like it a lot. And to cut the difference, because we also had Richard, so Richard Lakewood. We're now going to find out. Someone will type into Google Richard Lakewood and find out that this is some celebrity that actually exists. But yes, uh, ah, Richard says, I mean, the child hasn't earned the right to know his sire's name. See, I would assume that the child does know the sire's name because he has been catching rats about his property for quite a long time. Uh, but either way, Sir Richard Lakewood, we have got... Uh, Lakewood does sound like a Pendragon player knight. Uh, knight of Newton Tony, sir, reporting in to Sir Roderick of Serum. Right, so now we're on to our attributes. It's the old favourite of 753. 753, 753. Our rat catcher, a proud rat catcher who gambles, is going to be. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that there's got to be a certain amount of physicality to catching rats, hasn't there? But then again, we, we've established this is a poisoner. This is a poisoner, not a, not someone who's literally chasing rats around an estate. So, physical, social, mental made sense to me initially when I was thinking of a sort of lurky, scabrous rat catcher. But if this is a person is more involved in poisons, uh, I'm thinking maybe mental, social, physical actually, because mental for all the concoctions. I know these animals. Social because they're a gambler. They must be a sociable creature to some degree. Physical because the best they could take on in life was a rat, and now they are a spy catcher for their lord. So again, mental, social, physical. I'm thinking mental, social. Uh, no one else is agreeing with me. No one else is agreeing with me. I mean, they may be a very bad gambler. Um, but I'm also thinking that because this character is an old clan Zimishi and I don't like to punish my own characters, so this isn't min-maxing, so don't accuse me of it, if I put loads of dots in physical, I then have animalism or specs and dominate, <laughs> and I will have one of their key uh, attributes being the weakest on my sheet. So, let's go for mental, social, physical. So, let's see. I'm going to say wits is probably highest here. Actually, no, perception. Perception. There we go. We'll go for the good old-fashioned 3 2, two. Yeah, It's like a football formation. You can't go wrong with a 4 4 two or a 3 2, two. And social... Now, is this good person a good gambler? Hmm, that's the good question. Probably not. But I imagine someone who involves their, their time with, with crafting potions and poisons and killing animals is probably not going to care over much about their appearance. They're probably going to be more reliant on charisma and manipulation. So, let's see... Let's go for 
we'll go for manipulation first. Now we could evenly spread it so this person isn't just but ugly. Hmm. Maybe, the, maybe uh, of course, you don't catch the diseases from the rats. You catch the diseases from the fleas. But let's so let... I don't think anyone's going to let someone at their table if they think he's uh, riddled with disease. So we'll go for... Should I bump up manipulation to four dots or charisma to three dots? What are people thinking? Is manipulation or charisma a better choice here? I mean, knowing the disciplines that we have coming up in the form of Dominate, Charisma, I think, sees more play with Dominate than Manipulation. Again, I'm not min-maxing, I'm just making sure I'm not punishing myself. Uh, so, yeah, Manipulation 4. I think that's the more interesting choice, you know. Not only is it slightly phallic, it's also uncommon i find for people at character creation there you go everyone saying manipulation everyone loves the manipulation attribute let's be honest uh, most people like to evenly balance things as much as they can and this is where we're looking at things here we've got our three dots of course in physical attributes and usually most players will go dot 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 and i don't blame them because no one wants to be rolling a dice pool of one die potentially zero if they're at penalties so let's have a think. Is this person going to be physically... Yeah, I guess he is a good gambler if his manipulation's that high, or maybe he's just a good cheater. Even spread, even spread is the logical choice, I think. And also, it rewards me more if I decide to then put freebie points in physical traits. So, I'm <laughs> pure dex. So I'll just put three dots in dex, and otherwise just a sickly, pathetic... Yeah, he does need stamina to resist poison. That is a very good point, Mikhail Kreuz. Kreuz. Uh, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm doing that. Stamina and dex. Strength can stay down at one. This character is not a fighter. All right, so then we are on our 13-9-5. 13 9 5 so, what have we got here? Well, oh, there's Okut. <laughs> that, that, uh, it's near Yakutsk. I think we're going to have to look at knowledges first and foremost, aren't we? Because they are a rat catcher, first of all, a poisoner. We know this. So we're probably going to be putting three dots in medicine straight away. Uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, as Galway Shade has just uh, wandered in to say, why not put more to physical attributes? You'd have to be fit to be a rat catcher. This isn't a character who physically chases rats. This is a character who poisons rats and is now catching spies. Uh, but they are doing so with their mental acuity and social gifts rather than the physical ability to chase down these individuals. So anyway... Uh, what else do we need? Now, it may not actually be 13 in Knowledges. Really, it depends, I guess. Enigmas makes a bit of sense. And Hearth Wisdom, if he's a local boy. Investigation, too. He's a spy catcher. Uh, I'm tempted to put Investigation up to three dots as well. Yep, one in Seneschal. He's a servant now. Very good point, Richard. Thank you. So what are we looking at? 3, 6, 9, 10. Okay, so this one's definitely going to be our 13. Uh, I don't know that occult is necessarily appropriate. Law? Hmm. Or theology? We haven't... We, we can go for law. Law could be his sort of back pocket skill there. Uh, so we've got two more to spend. I don't tend to put traits above three dots at this point until I get into freebies. So I'm thinking, no, I don't think this person's a theologian at all. I think this character is as atheist as one can be in the Middle Ages. Uh, I'm going to put another dot in Seneschal. Maybe he's been the lackey of this Zimishi for a little while. And academics? Yeah, okay, we'll go for academics. We'll go for academics. Uh, good suggestion, Maskineer. So now we need to find our 9, our 9 and our 5. So we know that this character isn't going to be terribly interested in athletics or brawling. Uh, alertness may well help. Uh, I mean, it helps in most cases in this game. Uh, 
and empathy as well if he's a spy catcher in fact i would say empathy needs to be well i can't click on that third dot for some reason there we go sorry about all the clicking you're going to be hearing so we've either this is either it for our talents subterfuge makes sense as well though doesn't it hmm alertness intimidation expression subterfuge if he's a gambler gotta have subterfuge yeah yeah Okay, so we're currently looking at seven points here, so we need to put another two down. I don't know that this person is going to look terribly... Yeah, Leisure Domain, of course. There we go, yeah. All right, well, that's our talents done. That's the thing. I don't think this person is intimidating on the face of it. They are a poison maker who probably skulks around, gambles money, and spies on people. Doesn't need to be intimidating. More of a worm tongue, I guess, than a... Uh bully dom uh so we'll put five dots five dots in animal ken well we'll put two in an animal we'll put three in animal ken how about that he knows his rats look this fucking thing there we go uh three dots in animal ken crafts for traps makes sense doesn't it oh yeah man see felani agreed with me before, uh, just as i said it and i guess we're, i'm going to make a note here uh, because stealth is going to help out with our freebies. Awareness is uh, your awareness of supernatural things. Alertness is your perception-linked uh, trait that is often abused in World of Darkness. So, ah, uh, so as more and more people are pouring in partway through to the creation of our proud rat catcher who gambles, let's recap briefly. Uh, the reason I'm creating a V20 Dark Ages character is for a few reasons. One, it's because I love V20 Dark Ages, well, I love the Dark Ages in general. Uh, I think it's my favourite setting for Vampire. Two, it's because right now there is a 90% off sale on Drive Through RPG on all Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition products bar one. And basically everything Bionic's Path on there that's V20 has currently got 90% off its listed price, which is a lot, and that sale ends tomorrow. So I'm doing this to draw attention to it. I don't get anything from that. I'm just telling you because... If you miss out on the opportunity to get 90% off books you don't already own, like Beckett's Jihad Diary, Law of the Bloodlines, um, Ghouls and Revenants and so on, you'll be kicking yourself. Uh, and finally, I run a Patreon uh, game. I run five Patreon games, one of which is V20 Dark Ages, and I said we will create a villain for that game and for my Patreons, and so this is our villain. Right now, we have an old clan Zimishi, a child of Sir Richard Lakewood, proud rat catcher who gambles, in mortal life, hunted down rats, in immortal, undead life, hunts down spies. He's a competitive gambler. Mental, social, physical in that order. Knowledge, talent, skills in that order. The sale does indeed only apply to PDFs because if it applied to hard copies of books, we would go out of business. So with that said, we now go on to disciplines. Disciplines, we're an old clan Zimishi. And that means our disciplines are animalism. I'm testing my knowledge here. When do you, when do you think I've ever created an old clan Zimishi in my life? Uh... <laughs> We have four dots, because it's Dark Ages. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm to the person who said survival for tracking rats, I agree. We may want to put some freebie points there, which is why I put note down. Um, thank you very much, Maskineer. So, yes, animalism does make some sense, doesn't it? I mean, this person is going to be primarily... I'm thinking two dots animalism, two dots all specs, you know. I think that actually makes a degree of sense to do it like that. In life, animal hunter. In unlife, spy catcher. Um, there is a link to the sale below if you want to get V20 Dark Ages on 90% off. It's right in the video description, so take it from there. If you see the affiliate text at the end of the link, there's a little question mark. It will say affiliate ID, blah, 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 blah. I have a number. If you happen to buy any books on Drive Through RPG ever, if you put that affiliate link at the end of the link of the book, reload the page with that there, then add it to your basket, I get a percentage. This is how I keep my lights on. Oh dear, if the sale has already ended, uh, then it probably ended while I was streaming. That's... <laughs> 
this character creation session took too long. Too long. Well, either way, it's four dots for disciplines in Dark Ages, so I'm thinking uh, it's an old clan Zimishi Konstantinos. Uh, right now I'm leaning towards Animalism 2 or Specs 2. Uh, I'm not seeing this character as needing Dominate yet. I mean, maybe we'll use freebie points on it. So then we get into backgrounds, lovely, lovely backgrounds, of which, of course, there are far too few background points. You only get five, and this is where most people dump their freebies, as they should. We obviously have a lot of options here. Let's work on the ones that we aren't going to have. Uh... Nevertheless, you know, uh, don't be disappointed. If you missed the sale, don't be disheartened, because these books are still fantastic. I still contributed to a lot of them, and therefore, if you go on MatthewDawkins.com, you look on, I think, my resume page. Please do. Please do, do go on MatthewDawkins.com. Oh, yeah. Soren. It was on when I started. <laughs> Go on MatthewDawkins.com to go to my resume. If you buy any of the books by clicking on the link that takes you to them, I get a small percentage. Yeah, I don't think resources are going to be high. He's not going to have status, is he? Because he's a spy catcher. Uh, mentor does make sense if he has any link to the vampire that side him, and I'm guessing so. Um, influence over mortals? No. So mentor is certainly a possibility. Retainers? No. Herd, mm, rats maybe. The Gambling Den, there we go. Generation is always a nice one. Yeah, he's not going to have many friends with gambling debts. You're right, so let's not do allies. Contacts might make sense. Domain as well, if he has uh, access to his sire's home. I'm never that bothered with Generation. I think it's a bit of a redundant trait. Uh, I have played far too many games with people that stick as many dots as possible in generation and never find the benefit of it because I can count on one hand uh, and one digit the number of games I've played where people have started accessing disciplines with at six dots or more. This isn't me being dismissive, although it kind of is. Um, basically, by the time you start wanting to spend two blood points a turn or you want to start accessing level six disciplines... For me, you start losing sight of what makes Vampire a really fun game. I say you, what I mean is me here. So I've never seen the point beyond a narrative benefit. And the narrative benefit tends to be so minor that I just, I just don't care for generation. So let's not bother with it, I don't think. Contact makes sense, and that I think that'll do. Oh, and Domain, Domain, because of his uh, sire's estate. So right now, I think his sire, as uh, he controls his own territory, two dots, and we will split the rest like that. This character, what road is this character going to be on? Because this will determine conscience, self-control, conviction, conviction, and instinct. Uh, this character is not creating a Chiroptiran Marauder, because uh, this character is an old clan Zimishi. Uh, am I an official part of the setting, James Tobias Stewart? Uh, I know the ca the villain in uh, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood is called Wadkins, which uh, was an anagram of my name. And I think in, was it Winter's Teeth, the comic, There's you can see the Gentleman's Club. Uh, the Gentleman's, Gentleman Dawkins uh, Strip Club is in there as well. So yeah, I have appeared in various source books, not, not of my making of video games. Is my face on... Oh, yes, my face is on the Camden, isn't it? On, uh... In Vampire the Masquerade Heritage. I should know. I've got two copies of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually forgot about that. It's It has been a while. Uh, so, yeah, you know, and I've not contributed to any books for Vampire now for quite a while. So, you know, Forbidden Religions only came out recently after a fair amount of uh, wheels grinding away 
but eventually it did and that was the last of the five book i've worked on certainly the last one i can talk about i i worked on a source book a supplement as it were that goes with vampire the masquerade swan song an upcoming video game but i have no idea whether that will see release it really depends heritage is a board game a legacy board game richard and hello to rodrigo uh, is there a really good reason he's moved off of Humanitas? See, I'm... I'm thinking not. Uh, humanity makes sense. I mean, he's probably not exactly a paragon if he's been trying to poison people to get money. But that's fine. Uh, Henry asks, have I played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? Yes, um... Did, an, uh, did a Let's Play of it way back when. But yeah, I've played it uh, a lot. Uh, it's a game with with a lot of fun features. Some of the best of vampires in it, some of the worst of vampires in it. It's a game that I feel, not that anyone asked, drops off a cliff steeply after you leave Santa Monica. And it's a, um, I mean, you could argue it, that happens when you reach, after you leave downtown, but I, I think that the strongest part of the game is, it's very much front-loaded. It's a similar game design principle as you find in uh, Metal Gear Solid, which is a game I love uh, dearly, uh, but it's... Uh, I, Shout out, by the way, to anyone watching who is also a big fan of Metal Gear Solid. The best thing about Metal Gear Solid is starting it. And basically having to hide around those crates and not leave footprints from puddles and knock on walls and lure guards over towards you and that kind of thing. And then you go up the elevator and you find you're on the helipad bit. Uh, do tell me if all of this is uh, sounding familiar. And there's the helipad. You have to get past it to get into the base, the Shadow Moses base. And you've got options. You can go left, you can go middle, you can go right. In the middle, you've got searchlights. On the right, you've got snow where you can leave footprints and a guard. On the left, you've got cameras. And you've got a truck you can duck underneath. And so you've got all these different things, and it leads you into the idea that this is a stealth game uh, that where you will have options, and it makes you think, wow, this is immersive. And again, I love Metal Gear Solid. And so you take these options, you practice, you get good at it, you get into the base, and from that point on, there are no options. You never have to do anything like that again. There are no more searchlights in the entire game. There are very few locations where there are cameras that will affect your gameplay if they find you other than immediately in the base. And I don't think there's anywhere where leaving footprints will get you caught because there's no exterior places with guards and let, until you start backtracking. So it's a really interesting piece of game design uh, that suckers you in and makes you think that the game is going to be one thing but then you start to get caught up in the story and stop caring about the mechanism. And Bloodlines is similar, I think. It's I, it's not a comparison I see happen often, but Bloodlines, so much happens in that first act with Santa Monica, which is fantastic. It really is great fun and really immerses you in a certain shade of the world of darkness. But after that, the game becomes a lot more straightforward. And I guess most games do that. But it's something that is I'm very conscious of. And it's a reason I don't really replay Bloodlines. I enjoyed it the times I've played it. but I, And I think most people would probably agree if you polled them. Did you stop playing after Santa Monica? And most people would probably just say yes. I think most people did. Um, not many people have fun things to say about the Chinatown part, for instance. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so... We are going on. Um, Richard says, will Metal Gear Solid have any influence on They Came From Classified, uh, which we're intending on crowdfunding next month? Yes, you will see lots of Metal Gear references in there. Uh, so. Hmm. So, yes, we are on Virtues. We have seven dots to spread. I don't think this person's going to be... We are putting them on Humanity. We established that. 
Uh, they're not going to have a terribly high conscience, given that they were trying to poison people. Uh, I think, more than anything, it's self-control. Actually, that doesn't make much sense either, because they're a gambler. They're a gambler who hides in the shadows to poison people. <laughs> All their virtues should be low. This is someone who needs to find a road quickly, uh, because humanity is not going to support them for much longer. Uh, I think... Mm, yeah. This is tricky. Uh, humanity... I don't think it's going to cut it for this character. Well, we, we are going to, for now, going to... Uh, I'm finding that missing dot again. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, we've got to spend seven. We can't not spend seven. I guess courage. Yeah, courage. In a deformed kind of a way. So we've got four, uh, five, six. There we go. So we're going to start off with a humanity of five. Yeah, as I say, this person needs to find a road. And I think on a humanity of five, I have a... There's a bad aura that this character will get. Uh, I believe they're at minus one die, I think. But for the time being, it takes courage to be a poisoner, says Falani. Mm, well, maybe, maybe not, probably not. Uh, on the plus side, lots of willpower. Uh, let's roll a d10. Which shall we go for? Let's go for our actual V20 Dark Ages dice. Uh, that's right, we've got them. Uh, for, well, not V20 Dark Ages, these are Dark Ages Vampire dice uh, from a long time ago. See, I'm thinking the Courage is probably more appropriate for this character, given they're competitive, they're a gambler, they try to poison a lord um, than self-control, because if they had self-control they probably wouldn't be a gambler and they wouldn't be trying to murder someone. Uh, so we're going to start off with six blood points. Six blood points. So I like to roll for these things, you know. Makes things more fun. Right, that's that. As you can see, we have Vampire the Requiem dice, Chronicles of Darkness dice, Wealth the Forsaken dice. Uh, I was engaged to someone once who took my Mage the Awakening dice, never forgave her. Uh, that isn't why we broke up, but you know, that's a story for another day. This is Mr. Gon's character sheet, and yes, indeed, I find the third dot difficult to click on as well. Uh, so. Uh, Soren, you are leaving me to go watch a Canadian RPG stream play the Taskmaster RPG. Well, you know, you're sticking to Queen Elizabeth II's dominions, uh, so, you know, I can't begrudge you that. Enjoy your time in Canada. So now we get to our lovely, lovely freebie points. Freebie points. Anyone here uh, who doesn't know the cost of something with freebie points doesn't deserve to be here, in my opinion. So, what do we have? We Do we need to put any of his attributes up? I'm thinking not. I'm actually quite happy with his attributes spread for a character, uh, character creation. But skills, knowledges, and talents, uh, well, that's somewhere things may differ slightly. It's two freebie points per dot. So, we're going to be spending one, two. So, that's four, six, eight. There we go. And we're going to be putting another one in medicine. Wow, ten. We've already spent ten of our freebie points on abilities. Medicine, because we are creating poisons. Uh, we can't afford disciplines if we do what I just did. And unfortunately, I feel like I want to do that. Um, you'll notice I don't put many uh, abilities at one dot. And my reason for that is, well... Averages, really. Uh, I find the rolling one die uh, to, well, one plus an attribute tends to be negligible. Uh, I prefer highly specialised characters in play than all-rounders. That's my preference, is the way I play, whether it's this, whether it's Call of Cthulhu, whether it's any other damn game. So this is what we're going for. Um, if you want a link to this sheet, I recommend going just typing in uh, V20 Mr. Gone on uh, Google. You will find Mr. Gone's character sheets. Um, if people are trying to post it in the chat, they will find it. 
Uh, they will not find it. Uh, links will not work here. So, uh, changing breed law. That's an interesting question, Ty Taylor. Uh, so, probably not in video form unless someone signs up to my Patreon and pays me to make them. But you'll find more changing breed stuff in Wealth, the Apocalypse, Apocalyptic Record, uh, which we funded on Kickstarter a few months ago. Uh, it's the Back It's Jihad diary for Wealth, the Apocalypse. There's plenty of changing breeds in there. And also in Howls of the Apocalypse. Uh, one of the source books that's coming up for that. Uh, there's Skull Pigs, there's War Wolves, I think there may be even be a Korax in there, a Ratkin, so yeah, you've got, uh, we've got stuff. Uh, Roger de Camden is indeed in London during the Dark Ages, he is Seneschal of London. Uh, so what else do we have? So we spent ten dots here, so that means we've got five dots left. That means we have got five dots. We're going to be putting some of them, some of them, into our backgrounds. God damn it! Uh, we're going to be building this person's contacts and herd up. Um, so that's twelve dots spent. Uh, I'm tempted as well to. We've got three dots left. Hmm. Three dots. We could put one more ability up and put one more into another background. Let's go for academics. I really liked it earlier. Someone suggested that the study of poisons and medicines and so on, the actual theory behind it might be important to this character. I think that's pretty good. Although, you know what? I think what would be better, given this person's a spy catcher, is going to be... Subterfuge or alertness. Uh, sub he's got a subterfuge and empathy. We'll go for that. Um, and then we could do one dot in willpower. Or we could do one more in a background. I'm going to go for willpower. No, I'm not. Yes, yes, I am. I am going to go for willpower, damn it. No retainers. So this individual does not retain rats or pigeons as servants. Not yet. But you never know what the game may bring. Finally, we get to the important thing. My name. Oh, look. <laughs> it's almost like I've typed it in before. And uh, sometimes, you know, I forget how to spell my name, so I need it on a drop down. And what will our character's name be? Our old clan Zimishi... Proud rat catcher who gambles, also a spy catcher. Any suggestions? Bear in mind this is the Middle Ages, it's in Great Britain. This is not going to be someone who... Um, there you go, we got Will. Someone said always go Will. I know they're referring to Will Power. First name is Will, as in William. Godwin Smithson. Ooh. Now... Keep in mind, keep in mind that a lot of people won't have what we would regard today as a surname. Uh, there would often be son of or app or um, of a town or location. So, <laughs> loan the poisoner. You know, if I think if you have to go by the name the poisoner, you're probably not doing a very good job. But we could go for William the Rat Catcher, couldn't we? Will Duquesne. Hmm. Will do K hang on, Kane? No, 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 he's not... No, no, we're not going with that. Count Dracula, very good, Henry. Smith. Will Smith, yes. <laughs> uh, Tyne is of the inn. Huh, okay. Define Tyne line, that is what we're going to do. Will Tyne. There, or we will spell it the way you just suggested. Will Thin of the inn. There we go. And no, he's not going to be Will Smith, children, God, God Almighty. And our game is Dark Ages Forms. Because this is now going to be an antagonist who appears in the V20 Dark Ages game that I run for one of my Patreon groups. There we go, we have created a character for Dark Ages Vampire, and by the time we finished the sale that I was doing this to promote has concluded. Bad timing on my part, but it seems to have been entertaining for around 60-odd people, so I guess good for that. Good for us. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you very much, all of you, for watching. Uh, I will wrap up in the next 5-10 minutes, so now it's a free-for-all. If you have any questions, if you have any... Um, 
requests, suggestions, I don't, I'm not singing for anyone here, uh, then speak now or forever hold your peace. Otherwise, I will probably just talk about how they came from beneath the sea and they came from beyond the grave, are two of the most fantastic role-playing games you could ever hope to buy. And if you haven't bought, in fact, I'm going to make a request. I'm going to make a quick request to you right now. Right now, I want you to listen. Listen close. If you've bought They Came From Beneath the Sea, or They Came From Beyond the Grave, or are considering buying either, I have a favour to ask of you. A big favour that will take 10 seconds of your time. Only 10 seconds of your time. If you go on Drive Through RPG right now, drivethroughrpg.com, which is where you would have downloaded those books from, or bought them from, most probably, you can... Find that game. Type in They Came From. You'll get Beneath the Sea or Beyond the Grave. Click on that link. Give it a rating. There are around 60 people in this chat right now. There are only around 20 ratings on Beyond the Grave. And I know that it has sold far more than 20. And I know that it is liked because people are coming to me directly to tell me that it is liked. But I know that sales and drive through are largely driven by books having ratings. So, my request to you right now as I'm speaking is if you are sat at a PC, if you are on a phone, if you have any means of going on to drive through right now and finding one of these two books or both of them and giving it a rating that you feel is fair and I'm not going to prescribe a rating, please leave one because it will genuinely help people find these books. And if you don't own either of them, please consider picking up one or both, because it helps me. I do this professionally. These two books are very important to me. These are the first games I developed all the way from concept through to release, and I'm very proud of them. And next month we've got They Came From Classified, and They Came From The Cyclops' Cave, which is our spy movies and fantasy movies versions of these games going up on some kind of crowdfunding, probably Kickstarter. So the more attention they get, genuinely, the better. And I'll probably do a video all about that Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign uh, when it goes live. So please, I'm speaking to you now quite from the heart. It would mean the world to me if you did that. Uh, it won't take you any time at all, far less time than it's taken me to talk about it, but I would really appreciate it. So... Let's see, what questions do we have here? We've got quite a lot of people uh, saying, what are you working on these days, asks BK. Last thing I worked on BK was editing. I was editing a novel for the Aberrant role-playing game. I'm also working on some board games. I've done quite a lot quite a lot of work on Vampire the Masquerade Chapters by Flyos Games. Uh, that is uh, going to be a wonderful game, I hope, because I've written a lot of it. Uh, I also may well be working on a werewolf-related project, but I couldn't say much more than that. Uh, and also, of course, there's been They Came From Classified and They Came From The Cyclops Cave. I keep myself busy. I work on a lot of things. Uh, thank you very much for people who watched and are tuning out now. Uh, we also have What Are Your Thoughts On The Beast? What are my thoughts on The Beast? Well, I guess it depends on your beast, but most beasts in Vampire the Masquerade tend to be fairly hungry, merciless creatures that drive you to distraction. Maskinist says, I was hoping to get my name in. Unfortunately not, but a lot of your suggestions did make it. DP, any new they came from lines or supplements coming out? So you've got Classified, you've got Cyclops' Cave, and also coming up very soon you've got They Came From Camp Murder Lake. That will not be crowdfunded. It's a large source book that is designed to expand beyond the grave with slasher movie stuff. That's a 1980s slasher movie. They Came From Camp Murder Lake, arguably my favourite of the They Came From books. Is Coldenism tied to the worm, says Thorstein? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, I don't think there's many actions that werewolves would identify vampires making that aren't tied to the worm. I don't think it's intentionally tied to the worm, mind you, but the manipulation of Gaia using a form of blood magic is probably seen as wormy. James Tobias Stewart said, I enjoyed watching it and looking to Camden up. Led to me discovering official merch of him with his look clearly being modelled on you. There's official merch of Roger to Camden. 
That is news to me. James, if you're still watching this, go on MatthewDawkins.com, use the contact me link and send me a link to that merch. <laughs> if my face is being sold somewhere. Rodrigo says, thank you for all the work and lore you provided us all these years. Beckett's Jihad Diary is probably my favourite supplement for Vampire. It is also my favourite supplement for Vampire. Uh, DP says that he owns both they came from. So I appreciate it. Please rate them. Thorstein says, are vampires inherently banal in the Changeling universe? The C20 book makes it very ambiguous. Uh, no, they're not inherently banal in the Changeling universe, but a lot of them are. Uh, they are creatures that in one respect shouldn't exist and they stagnate they calcify life around them they corrupt it erode it and if they're not banal they're far worse there's not many vampires that contribute to the dream that's for sure weird question what are your thoughts on pirating pen and paper rpgs says ty taylor uh, my thoughts are it is destructive to the hobby but uh, i can't really do much to stop it my hope is that people who pirate games decide i enjoyed this book so much in my stolen pdf that i'm now going to buy a copy i mean that's about all you can really hope for um, but there's no way of managing it, there's no way of preventing it, and I would prefer people weren't just uh, weren't stealing copies of games I worked on and never paying back to the people who make them, because, you know, we can only make them if people are actually paying us to make them. So it's... Uh, you know, I, I completely understand why some people do pirate, some people have very low uh, income, and have feel like they have no other option but also quite often if you have a low income and you want to get a copy of a game we run sales every single week for instance this well every single month this year onyx path are reducing games down to 10 percent of their normal cost because it's our 10th anniversary so you will be able to afford a game for a couple of dollars so I don't know. I'm not a big fan of piracy for obvious reasons, because if all my work got stolen, I wouldn't get paid. Any books with good poisons for World of Darkness, says Surge. None that spring to mind, probably in World of Darkness Combat. Unholy says, I couldn't find some of the old lore videos. Was curious if you would upload if Dawkins Guide will replace them. Did I get rid of my old lore videos? I don't think so. I think my Gentleman's Guide to Vampires is still around, and certainly the ones that are on the World of Darkness official channel are. Richard says he has his review copy of They Came From Me on the Grave. Just finished the other book because I was due to review. Really looking forward to digging into a new They Came From. First one was such fun. Thank you very much. Paul Smart asks the age-old question of what is my favourite clan tribe <laughs> all other White Wolf games. Uh, there is no static answer for that. My answer will change like the wind. Uh, so let's just answer today. My favourite clan is... What is my favourite clan right now? Nosferatu. My favourite tribe is... Uh, Silent Strider. My favourite tradition is currently the Order of Hermes. My favourite guild for Wraith is the Alchemy Guild. My favourite kith for <laughs> Changeling is the... I'll go for Red Caps. Why the hell not? There you go. Uh, I won't go further than that. Would you humour us with your great macho man? <laughs> Perhaps as Will Thin trying to get someone to drink something he's poisoned. Okay, so you want a macho man Randy Savage. Uh, as a vampire. <clears throat> yeah. That's right, you drink your poison. Uh -huh. Dig it! You let that poison slip down your throat. Oh, Cullen! The way you've been eyeing Miss Elizabeth. Uh -huh. I'm gonna catch you, Hulk Hogan, and when I do, I'm gonna drain every last drop of blood out of your body, uh -huh. Then I will hit you with my potence enhanced elbow drop, yeah! Off the top rope, one, two, three, that's right, my elbow through your heart like a steak, mm -hmm. sending you into Torpor, yeah! That's right, mm, yeah! I am the macho vampire, Will Thin. that's right, oh, oh, dig it! There you go. 
you uh, ask it, you asked for it, and so you received it. Now to have another drink. <laughs> The, um, the trick to Randy Savage is <laughs> to really lean into... He, he will never pronounce an a hard A. He will never go, ah. It's always, oh. Uh, and it's a sort of benefit of a southern accent. So it would be macho. First name macho, last name man. <laughs> yeah. Um... What else do we have? Uh, DP says, I'm a fan of crossovers. Can you think of scenarios for Seagrave classified Cyclops Cave? Absolutely I can. Uh, there's the little known reality of they came from is I designed every single one of these books to be able to fit together. Uh, they are not exclusive. Every single book contains different archetypes. Every single book contains different villains. Every single book contains different cinematics and quips. You put them all together, you can put archetypes from one book into another book. You can put villains from one book into another book because it's completely system cross compatible. I have always put crossover into my World of Darkness games when I've ran them. Always with Chronicles of Darkness, which is why I went on to develop the Contagion Chronicle for, Chronicle for Chronicles of Darkness. But there was always imbalance, there was always powers that some people had that wouldn't make sense in another world. But where they came from, by design, these books fit together. So, yeah, crossover is not just allowed, it is encouraged. Use archetypes from Beneath the Sea in your game of Beyond the Grave. Use villains from Classified and put them in Beyond the Grave. Use monsters from Cyclops' Cave and put them in Beneath the Sea. You can move them around as much as you want. By the time you put all of these books back to back and they came from Camp Murder Lake, the number of cinematics you have available to you, as well as other powers and such options, is huge. And I've just not wanted to repeat information across these books. So they all exist on their own merit. And I personally, as a player of role-playing games and a GM of role-playing games, I value that. So I'm hoping other people do as well. Richard says, what are the upcoming Pathcast topics? Good question, Richard. Last Friday, I think, was our first Mage of the Ascension roundtable. Next Friday, we'll have another Mage of the Ascension roundtable with a different crew. It'll be me hosting. Uh, the guests on that one will be Danielle Lauzon, Travis Legg, Ian A.A. Watson, and Michael Barker, who respectively developed uh, Technocracy Reloaded, Lore of the Traditions, Victorian Mage, and Faces of Magic ongoing, one of the stretch goals for Lore of the Traditions. So there you go. Uh, after that, we've probably got a Werewolf Roundtable and then a Vampire Roundtable, and I'm hosting all of them. I think I'm a guest on the Vampire one, actually. James Tobias Stewart, if you were asked to voice the gentleman in a Vampire the Masquerade game, would I do it? Uh, yeah, if I was paid for it, I wouldn't do it for free. Well, Maskineer Project says, do you have any advice for those of who are starting out as game developers? If you're talking about tabletop role-playing games, uh, the best advice I can give you is network. <laughs> I know it sounds obvious, but you need to develop an audience before you sell a game, because if you add a game to an already crowded market and it, there's you haven't marked yourself out, then people aren't going to find it. Building the audience is the biggest challenge we have. I want these games beside me that they came from to do fantastically well, but I'm only one person. Onyx Path are only one company. You can't rely on customers for word of mouth. You need to find ways of getting your games out there. And that is always going to be the challenge in tabletop role-playing games. None of us are Dungeons & Dragons. Not even Vampire the Masquerade. Nowhere near the popularity of D&D. So it's a challenge, but what you have to do is carve that space out by being a helpful contributor to places like RPGNet, by hosting games at conventions and running your own games, pushing it on people, running several sessions at conventions so that lots of people come to it, find it, talk about it, and then when it gets released, they'll buy it with good memories in their minds. Run actual plays online, get on podcasts and talk about it. Set up your own podcast if no one's interviewing you. You need to get yourself out there. And that is before, uh, dreadful as it sounds, you, need to pra you also need to practice your craft as a writer and as a developer. Of course you do. But 
part of getting hired as a writer and a developer is getting yourself out there. So it's it's a genuinely a difficult thing. I had an advantage when I came into it. Uh, I would say because of my, I guess what I'd done something like five years of videos by the time I came into the industry, uh, the actual writing industry. So I had a reputation, and because I hadn't pissed that reputation away by in insulting people. <laughs> Uh, I it wasn't like I was automatically getting hired. There, what the people weren't thinking he's a celebrity. They just knew who I was because I had been helping them. I'd been promoting their products. I'd been interviewing them. It was wasn't by design. I never planned to do this professionally. I just ended up finding that I could do it and finding that I could do it and I could actually earn a fair amount of money doing it because I am a workaholic. Um, as you can tell by the fact that I'm doing this late on a Sunday night means that I can um, that it kind of worked out for me not everyone has that journey and I certainly wouldn't recommend making videos for five years hoping that that's the key to becoming a successful freelancer in my case that is just how it worked out um, I'm sure there were other aspects of it as well I'm a half decent writer as well um mm hmm Richard says, any guess as to how long we have to wait for Mask of the Mythos? I do not have a deadline, a turnaround of Mask of the Mythos. It isn't one of my projects for Scion, but do check out, keep checking out the onyxpath.com. When it moves on the schedule, you will see it. Brian Christensen says, good evening, Matthew. Didn't expect Dark Ages of Vampire 20 character creation being live streamed from here. Well, here it is. And uh, if you missed it, rewind, go all the way back to the beginning. And if you want to play in games like V20 Dark Ages, you can find me running them by backing my Patreon. You can play in those games. Unholy Reba says, I couldn't find the original Zimishi video. Maybe it's on my end. That's odd. There is another one, though, I made. Um, I don't remember disabling it, though I did uh, get rid of a lot of old videos um, not long ago. Maskinir says I need to purchase a hard copy of the Doctor Who RPG game because all the pirate copies I, I had kept disappearing. Good. I'm glad they did. Thorstein says, do you think any other clans dwelled on the great step with the Mongols other than the Ander? I think so. I would say so because I'm not a big fan of clans being regionally locked, uh, to put it that way. I find that it can create very negative stereotypes surrounding a playable clan. And it's difficult because some clans can resemble a culture or can have been have clung to a culture, but I don't like that kind of exclusivity, unless it's baked into the story. If the Ander shared the step with um, other non-Ander Gangrel and some Zimishi and some Ventra or whatever, and then they pursued a purge to ensure they were the only bloodline remaining, that works for me in a way, because it works into the meta plot. But I don't like the idea that no one else just no other vampires of other clans were there. That, Without any explanation, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, DP says, any plans on releasing a They Came From Cheesy 80s action flicks? I think there's a strong possibility we could, depending on how well classified in Cyclops' Cave does. Uh, it's certainly on my list of uh, genres we could cover. The biggest challenge with They Came From games and upcoming They Came From games is, as I was talking about earlier, I want every single book to stand on its own merits. And if every single one has different cinematics, we need to keep coming up with new cinematics without scraping the bottom of the barrel. They've all got to be useful. Uh, so I feel like we can maybe fit one more They Came From core book or large source book in before we need to start thinking about what we're doing with the whole line. Which of the World of Darkness games do you want to play the most but don't get to, says Chris. Probably Wraith the Oblivion, though I am running that for members of my Patreon. I'm seeing lots of laughing faces. This is where I've caught up to now, so that would be Macho Man Randy Savage there. Uh, what do I think of Hunter the Reckoning? Loved it in the day, says Smans. Not my favourite World of Darkness game. Not my least favourite World of Darkness game. Uh, I'm a big fan of Hunters in the guise of Hunter the Vigil more than Hunter the Reckoning, so I'm more of a Chronicles of Darkness person when it comes to Hunter. Uh, so James has sent me a link, uh, so I will look into it. Snap into a slim gym. <laughs> uh, says Pal Mal. Richard, perhaps your vampire prefers the taste of mortals of poison in their blood. You got poison in your blood, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. 
Uh, I will stop with the Macho Man Randy Savage. Got any 30 second tips for writing tabletop campaign for vampire? Yep, the 30 second tip that I give people all the time is keep it local, keep it intimate, make it about the characters, not about the world. Don't worry about designing a city with 30 other vampires in. Make it about designing a, a block with maybe one other neighbouring vampire nearby. Make it about the relationships with the mortals and the struggles they're going through and what happens when the landlord starts breathing down your neck for rent. What happens when the policeman pulls you over or tries to arrest you make it about mortals first because then when you do start introducing other aspects of the world of darkness they will feel special if it's already a right there up front you will lose an awful lot of what makes vampire such an interesting game as a reader don't forget that when you started reading vampire the masquerade it was the core book with those clans in it was your first glimpse if all you're doing is running using that then that's a great start because if you have got the entire library and then you start running it can be quite overwhelming um, what else do we have here lots of questions so it looks like I'm going to be here a little longer but uh, I'm glad you are <laughs> sticking around to watch Cross compatibility is great, should be a thing for every system, says Brian Christensen. I agree. Henry says, Have I played Disco Elysium? I have indeed. I am playing on the Nintendo Switch, in fact. Uh, Ty Taylor. Oh, and I think it's fantastic, uh, especially the mu music and the voice acting. Ty, Ty Taylor is Prince Cecily canon or just a comic book character uh, i believe all of the uh, characters in winter's teeth and the other comics are canonical yes with the critical role animated series out now would you like to see an animated series or live action for world of darkness sure i would yeah uh yeah i would it would be wonderful if it could make that uh, jump 20th anniversary or 5th edition which do you prefer and why uh, obviously i'm somewhat biased i've worked on both uh, so, but 5th edition is the one that's most present in my mind. Nevertheless, the one I prefer to run is 20th anniversary because I am more comfortable with the system and it does what I want it to. 5th edition, I love parts of that system as well, don't get me wrong, and I love a lot of the content. I use most of the content from 5th edition in 20th anniversary revised edition games. Uh... Brian says, I think the hardest aspect of game development is content creation. That's what I've been struggling with. Well, the thing is you need to structure your content creation. You need to you need to lay out your book with an outline. Say, okay, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. What do these chapters contain? And then you break down that chapter and you say, okay, well, I need this section, this section, this section, this section. How many word words in each section as soon as you start breaking things down building a skeleton of the book you want to make it makes it very easy to paint in those blank spaces um, you can be daunted with a massive project and if you have a massive project then you'll never get started it's the old blank page problem for any writer but if you have a page that's broken into nice little chunks you can write your 2,000 words in a day and feel satisfied because you've finished a section just like that. Or you can dart around, but you always know the skeleton. Uh, what else do we have? Richard saying, is Dawkins Jr. doing well? He is doing very well. He's asleep right now. I'd certainly hope so, anyway. Uh, do I think Dark Ages work in 5th edition? Says Fabulous. I do believe Dark Ages work in 5th edition. I've run a 5th edition Dark Ages game, and there is nothing about the 5th edition system that wouldn't work for Dark Ages. In my opinion, although we may well eventually see a V5 Dark Ages book, and there's not one slated as far as I'm aware, but I'm not told everything, um, I don't think it's needed other than for setting. The system doesn't need to change at all. Uh, so what else do we have here? Have I ever played Stellaris? I have indeed. Um, although my preferred Paradox game, uh, grand strategy game, is Hearts of Iron 4, probably followed by Crusader Kings 3. I haven't played that much. I've played Crusader Kings 2 a lot more than 3, uh, probably because it's been out for longer. But I do think Crusader Kings 3 is excellent. But Hearts of Iron 4 is the uh, Paradox Grand Strategy game I play the most. I tend to play Minor Nations. So Yugoslavia is a favourite of mine in uh, Hearts of Iron 4. I'm trying to drive away the bloody Italians. Uh... <laughs> uh Bye bye Unholy Erebus. Ty Taylor, what the major difference between World and Chronicles for a layman? Um, oh, God... Oh, well, that's a, there's a lot to cover there. Uh, 
Um, so rather than going into it, by second edition Chronicles of Darkness, Chronicles of Darkness is a completely different game to World of Darkness. It's a similar system, but they are different worlds entirely. So even Vampire the Requiem second edition, a lot of the complaints about Vampire the Requiem first edition is always oh, just Vampire the Masquerade with some names changed. Second edition Requiem does feel very different to Masquerade. It kind of draws a bit closer with V5, but I'm a big fan of Requiem second edition. Um, yeah, so anyway, what else do we have here? Thoroughly impressed by the savage voice acting. Uh, so it's quite alright to steal my time. Thank you very much for looking forward to the They Came From games. What's my favourite minor villain in the game you have run or played in and why? Uh, I probably play... When I was running Pathfinder way back when, uh, I played Monteron from the Baldur's Gate games, a neutral evil halfling thief, ro thief fighter, fighter thief, uh, who was basically stalking one of the characters and laid some paralysing poison on their pillow. And then while they were frozen in place... So it's one of those silly things, isn't it? You play D&D, you play Pathfinder, you go into a dungeon, you're poking every fucking surface with a stick to see whether there's a trap. You go back to the inn, you immediately think you're safe. Um, Montron follows this character back to the inn and puts some manticore poison or something on the pillow. And just waits for the character to go to sleep. And then slides out from under the bed while they're paralysed. Can't move. Lo looms over them. And basically just cuts their cheek and says... Um, I just want you to know... That if I wanted to right now, I could cut your throat. And I could be cutting every member of your party's delicate little throats. I could be watching the blood fall and you'd just be staring at me unable to do anything. I just want you to know that I could do that right now. And he walked out and they remained paralysed until the morning, utterly terrified. And it was one of those wonderful moments that, despite the fact this is a fantasy RPG, this is an adventure, it was a display of how horrifying something as simple as a paralysis spell could be. Uh, do we have any other questions? We do. Augustus87 Heron says, Saw you live online. Thought I would pop in and say hello in online church at the moment. Take care. Well, enjoy church, Augustus. Uh, and yes, Brian, make a framework or template. It will help you a great deal with your writing. Maskinir says, I'm having trouble finding better ways to do the mechanics from my, ver my first edition book. Mechanics. Best thing I can suggest there is adapt an existing system. Don't try and build something from the ground up. You will just torture yourself. Then, if you find the existing system doesn't work, you can start adjusting it. Do I know Jakob Klunder wrote for White Wolf and makes dope storyteller vault stuff, Denmark by Night? I do know of Jakob. I don't actually know him personally. Um, but I think I may have even worked on a book with him at one point. Michael says, is it me or would your Wraithy Oblivion stories make for a decent BBC4 historical horror drama? Uh, I, well, I would love to work for, uh, for something on Wraith in future. Wraith is my favourite World of Darkness game. And we will do a character creation session for Wraith in the coming weeks. So, favourite D&D setting to Planescape. That was easy. Brian says, speaking of Mortals and World of Darkness, I wonder why there was never an actual book for playing Mortals and World of Darkness. Well, there's actually rules for playing Mortals in V5, I think, in the Companion. So there you go. And Chronicles of Darkness, of course, the core book is all about playing Mortals. Uh, Brian also said, I think there was a World of Darkness Mortals book, actually, for World of Darkness of Old. So, you know what? I think you, there were rules, so there was just no core book for it. Because it was always a game about playing monsters, whereas Chronicles of Darkness is about initially about playing humans in a world of monsters. So yeah, I have got to the end of and spell jammer. I assume you mean rather than space jammer. Uh, I didn't really like it that much. Just wasn't my setting. I only ever played it once. Planescape drew me in a lot more. Uh, so, and in answer to your question, Daniel Oliveira, as this is the last one, I'm going to 
answer for tonight is the best way of getting into Wraith, just like with Vampire, is you make the game personal, you make it intimate, you make it about the characters and their deaths, you start off with characters alive, you kill them in the first session, don't let them know how they're going to die, uh, although of course clear with them the fact that they're, well, their lines and veils beforehand, but have them die during the per process of their life, and then you go into their life as a wraith and introduce them to the underworld and how new and scary it is just at the same time as you're introducing your players and yourself to it. It means you can control the level of Wraith the Oblivion that they are exposed to. It means you don't need to cover guilds and legions and spectres and the Tempest and all that all at once. You just drip feed it as their characters get to know the world you get to know the world and you can use as much or as little as you like so i am going to end this stream so thank you very much everybody for watching i really do appreciate it i know people are going to tune out now so as you're tuning out i'm going to ask again from the bottom of my heart please please if you haven't bought They Came From Beneath the Sea, if you haven't bought They Came From Beyond the Grave, please go on drivethroughrpg.com and buy one or both of them. If you can buy them tonight, I will see and I will appreciate it. And what's more, what's more, if you buy a copy, send me proof via matthewdawkins.com, a screenshot that you've bought it today, I will set up a game and run it for you. There you go, there's an offer. Buy a copy of one of these. I can invite you to my Patreon Discord. I can get you into a one-shot. So there's an offer. I will run They Came From for you if you buy it today and go on matthewdawkins.com and send me proof of your purchase. So I can't say much fairer than that. And it's a Pretty good deal, actually. It'll be about $20 for an evening's entertainment. So that's... Um, and an entire role-playing game. So do it. And if you already have a copy, leave a rating of one or both on DriveThruRPG because it really does help me. It helps Onyx Path. It helps these games sell. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Will Thin, our Tyne, is going to have a lot of fun in the V20 Dark Ages session that I run for my Patreons. With all that said, thank you so much for watching tonight. Have a good evening and see you again soon.